That cake was green. Trust me, an ounce of ganja is a lot, you know. It's definitely not my drug. Well, she cannot afford to be knocked out for three days. I no, guess. definitely. I mean, whoo! You know, I know their past and I know some of their future. Oh, psychic mom is coming. So, a little out. bit psychic. <laughs> yeah. I had my times where I drank way too much and a lot. I mean, way too much, but uh, back about four years after. And it came back to me too and he said, Can you do that again? <laughs> I have some questions. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Mel and we are here with mommy. So no already knows it. It's another story time with mommy Story time with mommy mommy story time with mommy. Um, yeah Don't mind me. I'll be munching on some cookies guys if you haven't checked it out already We baked some cookies. Um, there's a video for it up on my channel. It was posted yesterday. So Wednesday the 22nd yeah, vlog must day 22nd. So, don't mind me. Um, and there will be a part two coming to that video because we still have to decorate them. Must say some of them here. Look, fine, this does not look nice. Tell them I said this does not look nice. And then we have the reverse one. And then we have other shapes and forms. <laughs> what mommy? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hi, Ms. Lovelies. Um, I decided today to give you some random stories again. Because next week now is another big banger coming. So I decided this week I, I let it kind of flow. She, she has to she has to, you know, give you the give you time to recoup, yeah? Exactly. I mean to get anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um we are talking now, uh, about the time after Drew and uh, of course it was kind of hard for me to uh, be back on my own as a stranger in a strange land and of course uh, the whole of Port Antonio did know quite quickly that I was on my own again <laughs> and the interesting fact is that over the years every time that I had to fend for myself uh, rumors started and the rumors were not very pleasant because what they were saying is that I was the big lesbian. And nobody ever find me in no situation with nothing like that, you know. But it might it was their thing to kind of oh she doesn't have a man, so she must be a lesbian. And it was getting that bad that uh, at the time I, I had a helper for on the houseboat because um, we I was busy in the shop all the time. I had the th children and so I was glad to have somebody to help me out. And she went to Kingston one day. I think she had to pick up a, a barrel or so there and, and met a, a customs guy there. And... Uh, they get into talking and oh yeah I'm from Port Antonio as well the guy did say and then they did chat and chat you know how I go and she uh, disclosed that she was working for me and then he said oh I know her she's a big lesbian you know and and my helper she was like what you know <laughs> so when she came home now she was so distraught about this whole situation of course she told me right away and i was like yeah right <laughs> i mean they have nothing better to talk about you know it's like all the other rumors that that we have had about me being the biggest coke smuggler in in port antonio because i had the marina of course right and and people were watching and seeing things going on not for me 
as I was saying already, I couldn't afford to do anything illegal because I had my children and who would take care of them if I would get caught. So I stayed far from anything illegal and still the rumor was that I was the biggest coke smuggler. So where the money they guys? <laughs> where they? <laughs> Give me some now. I was looking for the money and I'm searching, 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 me couldn't find it. So all these these things like uh, uh, kind of upsetting on the one side, but then I learned to kind of ignore them. And then life in the marina continued as usual and uh, some things happened over the years though. Uh, for example, I was invited or uh, privileged enough to attend two births in Jamaica, in Port Antonio. Now I have to say, uh, when I was, when I had my first sons, two sons, um, <clears throat> I was still in Germany at the time, I used to um, be in a group of women uh, helping pregnant and breastfeeding women like giving them advice how to do this how to do that and we were like a group of five six women and uh, would meet every week and then whoever wanted to come in and and talk about problems and so would come in and over there already apart from my own two birth uh, three births uh, over there i attended some other births as well with friends so when I was uh, in Jamaica, uh, friends of ours, uh, a German couple actually, that uh, were staying in Jamaica for quite a while, were expecting their first child. And as time went on and so uh, the, the, the young mother was feeling insecure and, and I mean the situation in the Port Antonio Hospital, as we had discussed before, um, was not very pleasant at the time well, not not only at the time most of the time <clears throat> so when her time came she asked me if i would go with her and and stay with her and I said of course no problem so one uh, nice afternoon uh, her contraction started like was like late late afternoon and so we went up to the hospital and and uh, she was there and she was admitted and nothing much really progressed, you know, I mean, she, she would get her contractions once in a while and, and then it stopped again and it was like, she was feeling very uncomfortable. And, you know, I mean, me being the mad person that I am, by about 10 o'clock in the evening, I said, you know what, come, we go down in the marina. We go on a houseboat, you will be much more comfortable there because I'm a firm believer in houseboat. And so she was so distraught and so unhappy that she said, yes, let's go, please. I need to get out of here. So we just left. We didn't tell anybody. <laughs> no, we just left. We went down to the houseboat and I stayed with her the entire night and things were still not progressing that much neither. I mean, she was really, once in a blue moon, she would get a contraction. But at least she would be there and comfortable. So by six o'clock in the morning, I said, okay, now let's go back up. You know, when we reach up there, the midwife, she almost killed me, you know. <laughs> oh, how dare you to leave the hospital? Oh, no, 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 you got admitted already. I mean, I understand her. It was really a problem for her, you know, but I mean, it was like for, in this case, for the young mother, it was very necessary to get out of there, trust me, because probably otherwise that birth would have lasted three days. Anyhow, we reached up there. I, I, I survived the Crossing. problem with her. <laughs> <laughs> And it still took her until early afternoon to finally deliver her baby. And guess who that baby was? Lulu! <laughs> her friend that you met on uh, on her video with uh, in Berlin? Yeah, the Berlin vlog. It was Lulu. So Lulu was born in, in Jamaica, in Jamaica hospital. And trust me, I mean, these people up there at that time, they were so unfriendly. And, and, and... Lulu's mother got so, I mean, she, she was practically crying at one point in time because nobody really, apart from me, encouraged her. You know, even when doctor passed by, looked at her, that was about 11 o'clock in the morning or so. And she was like, at that time, she did have contractions regular and she was like exhausted already. And the doctor looked at her and said, oh, 
that will take a good while still. And she was, you could see us get slumped together. Mm -hmm. What? More time, you know? So I had to always build her back up and, and strengthen her and tell her, look, come on, you can make it. We will make it together. I'll help you. And so, as I said, finally early afternoon and, and I'm still astonished that, that in Germany at that time or, or other places, I'm sure, the father could attend the birth. For that Tony Hospital, forget it. The father well wanted to go in, you know. He, he, he insisted, he said, I would like to be there when my, my child gets born. And so, no, they wouldn't let him in. But is it all. just Port Antonio Hospital or Jamaican? I think hospital? it's a, it was a Jamaican policy at the time, but I mean, that was way, way, way uh, behind time. Mm -hmm. And up to this day, they are way behind time in that respect. Instead of leaving the, the father or whoever can assist the person for the entire birth. Now with Mayumi, when she had her first child, at least I could stay with her to, to a long degree because we didn't have COVID at the time. Mm -hmm. And that was very helpful for her, I think. And then uh, when she went into the labor room, I couldn't go, but eventually the father could go. Mm -hmm. So it has been modernized to a degree, but by far not as it is in other countries. Because in, in, in other <coughs> countries, the, the, the person can be there for the entire Oh process. yeah, oh yeah, they want it. They yeah, yeah. want that, you know, because the more a mother is surrounded by people she knows. And that was the whole thing when I attended the birth uh, in, in Germany. But, um, all of them were home births, you know, and what we did, we sat at a table and we were drinking tea and, and, and chatting and laughing in, the, in between the, the uh, woman got, got her contractions, you know, but she was comfortable. She was comfortable, at you ease. know, exactly. She and, was and distracted at the same And time. distracted from yeah. the pain. And I lived it myself when I had my second son. You know what I did? I, I went in the garden. We were living in the same house that that uh, we showed you i went in the garden and planted some beans having contractions in between i mean i was on my fours my belly hanging down to the ground get a contra con uh, uh, contraction and i would stop and then when the contraction over i would continue plant <laughs> beans you know but because it was distracting me mm -hmm. i was not concentrated on the pain and i think that's the best thing you can do if you have everything in order, if your child is, is, is laying in the right position, if, if uh, uh, everything should work properly. Mm -hmm. And then even as, uh, as I told you the story with Mayumi, even if things go wrong, you still can reach a hospital fast over there. Yeah. And here too, basically. So I think for me, it's still the best way to have a child because being pregnant and childbirth is not a sickness. It's a natural thing to do so I, I I'm a firm believer in in having your your people around and 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 uh, yeah make it easier the more a woman relaxes while giving birth the easier the baby will flutch out you know <laughs> flutch out, <laughs> flutch out. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> so uh, then I had the honor to attend a second birth in Jamaica as well and that was a lady from Switzerland and her position was that uh, she had a Jamaican baby father but had separated from him so she was all by her lonesome and she I met her through the marina of course and and same thing she asked me oh I don't want I'm, I'm afraid I don't want to go through the air alone and I said no problem I, I, I come with you I take care of you don't worry so her time came and we went up to the hospital and she got admitted and uh, same story, the midwife, the boy, I mean, I don't know why them so hard. It, it come like they, they want to punish them or something. Not all of them, of course. I knew personally two very nice midwives that would never do that. But my ladies were not lucky to get those. You know, they, when they went up there, the, some other ladies had uh, were on duty as midwife. And boy, them tough, tough, tough. You know, They're very harsh. Very harsh, and it's like, like even if you at a and go, mm, listen, chop, you better shut up. It's like, hello, that woman is having contractions. She is in pain. You know, boy, them were harsh. 
Anyhow, the, my Swiss lady now, she, she progressed nicely. It was nothing like with uh, Lulu's mother. Uh, and I wouldn't take her out of the hospital neither. <laughs> <laughs> I learned my lesson well. So we just, it was night again, of course, because every, as we all know, babies have a tendency to come at night. So finally she was ready to basically deliver the baby. And I, of course, had to wait outside because nobody was allowed. So I was just waiting for a little while until suddenly I hear the midwife call me. I said, Sabina, Cynthia, come in, come in. So I went in, I stood, uh, said yes. And she said, well, this lady is, doesn't want to, to press properly. Come help me to like kind of coach her, mm -hmm. you know, because she, she is not working with me. So, okay, um, I stood beside uh, the bed now. And every time a, a pressing contraction came, I would coach her in German because she came from Switzerland, a German part of Switzerland. So I would kind of, come, go on, and you can make it, and <coughs> and it did really help because in a matter of not even 10 minutes, the baby was born, a little boy. So I, I got actually to go inside the labor room and attend that birth to the very end. <laughs> so that was very nice. Healthy little boy and mother all right too and everything very fine. <coughs> okay, next story, complete different story. Uh, we had a wedding one day at the marina. Mm -hmm. Two young people, they got married uh, uh, anyhow uh, over on Navy Island and then they ordered a, like a wedding meal in our place. So we set up the, the back part of the marina nicely with, with table and chairs. They had not many people. They had a few little guests. They invited us because they came from abroad as well. <coughs> Oops. No, no cough, no sickness. Just anyhow. Um, what they did though they ordered as their wedding cake they ordered a ganja cake and i was okay no problem i will do that so i got an ounce of the green stuff and i mean little did i know what would happen because i never did it before anyhow i i i put the cake together and that cake was green, trust me. An ounce of ganja is a lot, you know. How much is it in pounds? Uh, it's 28 gram. It's not, you know, a uh, pound. You can't put a pound or a half pound of ganja <laughs> in a cake. You might think I would kill the people. No, no, no. I mean, normally one, one gram is a lot already, uh, already, right? So that was 28 gram. Okay. And then I kind of... And you put all 28 grams All 28 grams went in there. Boom. <laughs> you know? And I made a nice uh, uh, butter. And, and then... Uh, so what kind of... Was it like a plain cake? A vanilla it was cake? basically a plain cake, vanilla cake, but with the green stuff in it. You know, and that's why it turned green. Mm -hmm. And then I put the, the, the cake in the oven. And oh my God. It started to smell. <laughs> And it started to smell strong. I mean, I was, the houseboat was right here. I was baking the cake on the houseboat in my oven. And I mean, I left out of the houseboat and, and I was weird. I was down to the front gate and I could still smell the stuff. And at that time, I mean, stuff like that was completely illegal. And I was fretting now. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> If a police come in now, oh, they go arrest me and they go put me in jail. And, and I was like, really, really, oh, please, please, let these 45 minutes, normally you bake a cake like that for 45 minutes, let it go, get be over quick, 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 please, you know, because I was really panicking. Because we used to have police guys coming in frequently just to cool out, you know. <laughs> They would come and sit down for a while and chat a bit and maybe have a beer or so and then went out back on duty. So it was nothing unusual for police to come in. So I was seriously, I was, please, you can't don't make nobody come in. Well, it worked out. Nobody came in. <laughs> 
and it still smelled a good while after uh, the cake came out of the oven mm -hmm. because my god it was really strong and that smell is staining oh my anyhow then i put some icing on and do the usual for a nice cake and then uh, these people got married over on navy island went over with the ferry and came back with uh, with their guests and stuff and settled down and we would have uh, their uh, wedding dinner it was still like daylight it was like late afternoon so we we had the wedding dinner and everybody was sitting around the table and it was time to bring out the wedding cake and so we brought it out put it in the middle of the table and the usual bride and groom would cut the cake and her uh, and everything all right and they started to eat and <coughs> offered some to me and i know myself i cannot take that stuff you know so i said mm -mm, thank you no yeah, I'm fine. You, you, guys, <laughs> you know. And what happened too? Uh, you know, when if you if you eat anything with with ganja in it, it takes a good while to work, like over an hour and more. Now these people they like the cake, so basically they gobbled it down, you know. And then to the end, I I was just sitting there in awe and saying, "Wow, guys, you are going to be so freaking high." <laughs> So anyhow, all the time in between the come Sabina, come, 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 try it, little. come, you pick it, you, it's so nice, come, you have to try up here. So finally, I gave in, poor me, <laughs> and took a little piece and ate it, and well, we were still sitting around the table having fun, and, and uh, of course it started to work with these people, I had it much later than them, and when it suddenly hit me too, and I hadn't much remember they had a lot more so i was sitting there and was basically gone <laughs> i mean i was like in space yeah <laughs> and then time came to close down the marina and go on the houseboat and go to sleep would you believe i couldn't get up from my chair you know it needed two people to pull me up from my chair and guide me to the houseboat and in the bedroom and, and I would just jump on the bed and drop asleep and three days, three days I was on that bed, only got up to use the bathroom and went straight back down and went back to sleep for three days for that tiny little piece that I ate. It was like, mm -mm, never again, which never again for true, that is long ago. <laughs> but can you imagine? And these other people, they were just having fun and partying and laughing and joking. And next day, they were all of them were completely all right. And they had double, triple, four times yeah. the amount that I had. And I was gone for three days. So that was that story. <laughs> So mommy cannot manage those things. No, no, no. So if people ask me, uh, oh, you, you, you must smoke a lot of ganja. Uh, and me, mm -mm, <laughs> no, not me. It's not that I didn't try, but first of all, the smoking. I never smoked in my life, cigarettes or anything. You know, I am, I, I refuse to smoke. So if I inhale, all I get is a big, big cough. You know, like for. <coughs> that alone for me is 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 a no-no I, I i cannot handle that and then actually really what it does to me mm -mm, not mine i mean everybody was happy with it fine with you but mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> uh -uh. um actually right now i do take medical oil which um you only use like a little tiny drop the size of a rice grain and stuff that doesn't affect me and it, the health uh, benefits are tremendous so that is I will do that but I would never use anything like that for recreational purposes <laughs> no not, that's not my is definitely not my drug well she cannot afford to be knocked out for three days I no guess. definitely I mean whoo no <laughs> man mm -mm. so cut again new story again <clears throat> 
actually what had has happened to to me um i had some phases of uh, how you would call, call it clear clairvoyancy where i would meet people and i would talk to them for a while and suddenly it would be like i i know them you know i know their past and i know some of their future oh psychic moments come so out. a little bit psychic <laughs> yeah but it would only happen mostly it was with people that we would sit and 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 uh, talk and then of course drink and uh, um, i had my times where i drank way too much and a lot <laughs> I mean, way too much, but uh, it was within those times, you know, when I would just uh, meet people, sit with them, we would uh, talk, and then suddenly it come in my head, and I would ask them some questions. And they were like, how do you know? I said, I don't know, I just know. You know, it's like, I would, uh, even one, I remember one guy, this French guy, uh, <clears throat> I would tell him exactly how his father was looking. And he said, but how you know? I said, I don't know. It's just in my head. I don't know. <laughs> and I remember this one couple that came, they were working at the time in the, I think it was the American embassy. <clears throat> and they came as guests and same thing, sit down, talk and so. And, and they had, they were married otherwise, but were having, I don't know if you call it an affair or whatever. And without, I never saw these people before, you know. And within the conversation, and they had some few drinks too and stuff. We had, and suddenly I tell them, but you guys, you're not married with each other. And they said, no. How you know? And I said, well, I don't know how I know. The usual, right? And then I start to tell them some things too. And actually, I said, and I tell you something. In uh, if you go leave here in about a few weeks and next year, and I tell them exactly certain things, and they were like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Same people came back two years after. Come to me and say, boy, Sabina, everything you said came true. I mean, how did you do that? And I say, well, up to now, I don't know how I did do that. So, um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened to one more person as well. Same thing, he had some problems uh, with his wife in Germany. So she wasn't even there. And he was by himself. And for some reason, same thing happened again. We kind of start to see him. And I told him what would happen in Germany with him and his wife. And how it would happen. The same thing happened again about two years after. Because people have a tendency to come every two years. Two years after I come back and same thing happened. I said, boy, Sabina, exactly how you were saying. How would that go? I say. So, <clears throat> and this French guy where I explained some things about his father and I told him some other stuff and same thing two years after. No, that was more than two years. He came back about four years after. And he came back to me too and he said, can you do that again? <laughs> I have some question. I said, no, no, I can, it, it either happens or I, I cannot, I cannot kind of switch it on or off or do it. And. So he tried his best to get uh, uh, me to do it, but he said, sorry, you know, not you this time. You drunk calf again. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and I, but it didn't work, so I couldn't help him <laughs> in that respect. So that, that was like, I, but I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. For example, what I have too, when I go in some houses, uh, I went in, in Germany, I went in a house, a beautiful house, old house. And I went in there and started to feel so uncomfortable. It was a big party. The, the, the people in the house, it was, they were living in community in the house. And they had a big party. There were a lot of people there and stuff. And, and I went in there and I started to feel so uncomfortable. So the uh, evening progress and, and, and <clears throat> I get to talk to one of the people living in the house. And, and then he told me, oh, you know, we have a ghost in here. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, maybe that's why I'm feeling so uncomfortable. I said, yeah, because uh, 
we had they had this one room with a big piano in it and that piano would start to play nobody in the room mind you nobody in the room so they they would hear it play and go in the room and the room was empty and the, the piano stopped playing too at the time so i i must have felt the presence of this ghost and actually we had <coughs> the house in norwich where we lived um no, that is another. <laughs> that that is a that is a story supposed to come. Forget that strike. No more of that. But the house uh, that we showed you on the video, uh, where I used to live, for example, that house had such nice vibes. That house was built in eighteen hundred and forty, and when we came in there, there was uh, uh, Yosha and Nikki's father and me. We walked in there that house did not have any windows any doors no uh, electricity in there anymore it was basically a ruin but we walked in there and it was like whoa we felt nice and comfortable and then we got to, uh, to rent this place and we set it up ourselves we put in back the windows we put in back electricity everything we at that time we only had a hand pump like ee -oo, ee -oo, to get water <laughs> in the kitchen <clears throat> it was really really primitive but we loved it and that house for example we never even locked it the front door the back door always open even if nobody was in the house the amount of time we came home and some friends just sat in the kitchen and said, oh yeah well the door was open you know we meet some people in in our house surprisingly and and just the vibes in that house were beautiful so I guess that's why everybody who came there felt very comfortable. So the, the, those are my little sometimes and my Yumi and me what we both have too. Sometimes we look at people and then we look at each other and it's either yay or nay. You know and we are always right. Always. Although we don't know the people. <laughs> We, we get the vibes. As Jamaica would have said, either the spirit take them or you don't take them. Right. And, and, but it's a, a pretty fast uh, uh, inclination. of Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, you will get to it too. You're starting already too. She's too young still. But Mayumi and me, enough time is like, oh, after, after it turns out we were right. You know, it is like, ah, oh, see? Mm -hmm. We knew from the very beginning. <laughs> it's kind of nice to, to have a little special uh, vibes going on there. Yeah. Special abilities. So mommy is a psychic undercover. Yeah. But when as she... I said, please don't start asking <laughs> not to do anything. Uh, as I said, it was simply <clears throat> with certain people in a certain situation and it could not be re replicated or I, I had no choice neither. It's not like I would say, oh, let me try this person or something. Uh -uh. Yeah, because that's what that makes you try power with too. Like we can't find out what no, 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 no. you never I'm not did. telling you. <laughs> you never did. No, no, no. <laughs> true, true. No, but probably you are too close to that most of the time that yeah. doesn't work. Yeah, well, so those were my little random stories for today. Be prepared. Uh, next week is a, a sad one. The next catastrophe in the <laughs> family will be happening. Yes. So right now, <coughs> I hope everybody is fine and you are going to have a wonderful Christmas. And see you next time. Yes, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in as usual. And um, please remember to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.